Good morning, and welcome to the fifth Sunday in Lent. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope, my soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. A reading from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson about dry bones is a favorite. 
It is one of the most symbolic and hopeful of all literature. Dry bones, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. The prophet uses the image of deadness, just bones. God puts flesh on the bones. God breathes his spirit into the flesh, and it lives. The season of Lent is about the deadness we have, and the deadness present in the world, and how God would restore us, and the world too, to be a new creation. The lesson of the dry bones comes with a vision of the prophet Ezekiel. The purpose of the vision was to build hope in the people, hope that God would rescue them. It is a great lesson. God did indeed rescue the people of Israel. So what does this old, old lesson have to say to us? Somehow, just the words meet a need within us. Dry bones, dry bones. A pastor once held a very dead and brittle flower during his message. In the process of his message, the flower just kept disintegrating. Petals would flow, fall to the floor. Any movement of the pastor's hand would lead to falling petals until all the pastor had was the stem. After that message, a woman called him and asked if they could speak. When they did, she told the pastor that she hadn't been in church in a long time, and she felt just like that flower, once alive and beautiful, but now dead and disintegrating. With tears in her eyes, she asked if it was really possible to have new life breathe into a person who felt dead and alone, hopeless and afraid. It's a very unusual person who doesn't feel like dead bones at times. It's a matter of degrees. Depression can make one feel like that most of the time. But even the most up-appearing people have moments, many of them, when they feel such things as unappreciated and misunderstood, unworthy and incompetent, alone, fearful and worried, hopeless, unloved. Dead bones. Why do we feel this way at times? No two of us are exactly the same in how we feel, yet there are some common threads of why God can seem distant and our spirits sag. There are reasons. Among them are these. Life is hard. It has many demands. We get worn down. Our spirits are drained. All is normal. We pour ourselves out for our family and our work and in our church and in our community. And in that process, there is wear and tear. Our bones become dry. The spirit can drain away. Another reason we can feel like dry bones is that we feel some doors are closed to us. We feel we don't have the gifts to succeed or to make the team, or we don't have the resources to start the business of our dreams or the support of family and friends. A third reason we can feel like dry bones is that the obstacles seem too great to overcome. Congregations don't move forward so very often because they fear very real obstacles. Key people are in opposition to change, or it's perceived that money isn't available, or people will leave the congregation or it hasn't been done this way in this place before. Those congregations are likely to become dry bones. Individuals who hesitate before obstacles also become like dry bones. We can feel like dry bones because there are things that happen that are beyond our control. The people involved in any tragedy, a plane crash, an auto accident, a terrorist act, or any event that impacts our lives in tragic, tragic ways that just take our breath away. 
Even feeling vulnerable could take our breath away. Some folks give in to this invasion and become dry bones, and others fight their way through the valley to the light. Finally, we can feel like dry bones because we simply remain in our comfort zone. We close up. We always do what is safe. We stop allowing ourselves to be intellectually challenged. We become negative about any change or newness. Anyone looking at us from the outside would say we are dry bones. The people of Israel had become dry bones. The prophet's dream was that God would take these dry bones, put flesh on them, and breathe the Spirit of God into them. The scripture is so unique in that it never gives up. There is always the call to us to move beyond the valley of dry bones and to be renewed. There is always the call to not give up, to not give up to any hopelessness or defeat. The prophet Ezekiel spells out the way God can renew us. Everything is promise. Everything with God is possible. God's call and promise to us looks like this. I am going to open your graves. I love to hear that. We are always digging holes for ourselves and sometimes getting buried in them. God says, I am going to open your graves. No matter how dark or hopeless things seem to be, God says, I can set you free. So first of all, we need to hear the word of promise. Whenever we are down, how beautiful it is to remember that God has said, I am going to open your grave. The second way God seeks us in the down part of our life is to remind us that God is Lord. Ezekiel says it like this, you will know that I am Lord. An incredible part of remaining whole is to acknowledge that we have a God who reigns over all. Much of life is a mystery, but we trust that God is in control and all will be well with us as we give ourselves to that trust. The third way we cope with down thoughts and down times is to pray that God will do what the scripture promises. Ezekiel quotes God in this way, I will put my spirit within you. That's a good way to start every day. We can pray, God, put your spirit within me today. Fill me up. The fourth way we live victoriously in the midst of all that pulls us to give up, to get down, to feel hopeless, is to hear God's promise that says, you shall live. What a great promise. The Bible message is so understanding of our lives. This is how we shall live. We will have God's presence. God will go before us and stand with us and follow us. We will have tension, but it will not defeat us. So, so many of you know this. You survive tension day in and day out because you believe that God will not leave you. We believe we will have joy. We never give up on that. God is a God of joy. We look for that joy. We never let any darkness make us forget the blessings that we have enjoyed, that are still present and are yet to come. And we are people of vision. We hope with all our hearts that people of the church, of our congregation, can understand that. We are the descendants of those who came out of the valley of dry bones. God has given us the flesh of faith, and the spirit runs wild within us. We believe that all of life is God's work. We are so grateful to believe this and to be a participant. May God use us in this great work. May we be those who come singing out of every valley of death and hopelessness that would hold us captive.
and now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen Let us pray. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world as we face new uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect, protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.